All right, today we are going to talk about section 9.10. Uh, we're going to use our ratios to solve for the missing sides and or angles of right triangles. And we're also going to use our ratios to find uh, angles of elevation and depression. We're going to um, be talking about word problems and being able to draw the appropriate diagram and then solve for the missing piece of information. Uh, in the first example, we're going to talk about how to uh, find the actual angle in each of the following. And what we need to talk about is, if we were to talk about just solving, say, 2x equals 4. In order to solve this, we would divide by 2 because the inverse operation of multiplication is division. And so when we're solving this, we are going to try to get a by itself. Right now, we're taking the sine of a. And in order to get a by itself, we need to take the inverse sine of each side. So what we're going to type in, and when we do it to both sides, we take the inverse sine of the left. We're going to cancel out the sine. And we're going to take the inverse sine of the right side as well. So when we go out to our calculator, we're going to type in the inverse sign. The inverse sign is directly above the sign, so you have to press second and then sign. And of 0.34, we can find, and this is a good example here. I need to make sure that my mode is in degree, not radians. And then I need to do the same thing. And I find out that it is 19.8. Eight seven. And we typically are going to round our angles to the nearest degree. Um, so A is 19.88 or approximately 20 degrees. Now the same thing for letter B. I need to take the inverse cosine in order to find this, an inverse cosine of 0.5. Go back to my calculator. Second cosine of 0.5. And I get 60. And then for the last one, I'm going to take the inverse of tangent of both sides. So when you type that into your calculator, you should get 24.99 or approximately 25 degrees. So now we can uh, solve for the angles. Now we need to find the appropriate in the next problem. We need to find the appropriate trig function first of all. So in this case, we're solving for angle A. And we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse side. So when we go back to our Sokotoa, we need to figure out which one that we are going to use. And in this case, it tells us we're going to use the sine. And the sine of what angle? It's the sine of angle A is equal to 8 over 12. Now, just like we talked about, in order to solve for A, we need to take the inverse sine of both sides. And that's what we're going to type into our calculator, the inverse sine of 8 over 12. When you type that in, we get A is approximately 42 degrees, because that's 41.8. We're solving for C. We're given the hypotenuse. We're also giving the side adjacent to it. So going with the adjacent on the hypotenuse, we see that we are going to use the cosine. Cosine of angle C is adjacent over our hypotenuse. And then when we take the inverse cosine of each side, Type that into our calculator, and we get that C is about 53.1. And if we were rounding that to the nearest degree, it would be 53 degrees. 
go ahead and pause the video and solve for the last uh, three on this page here. Um, make sure you're identifying the appropriate trig function and then using the inverse to find the measure of the angle. Okay, go ahead and check your answers um, for these. And when you're looking at number three, it's a, a perfect example of the next type of problem. The diagram's already given for you, uh, but we're going to talk about how to uh, draw these diagrams ourselves from the word problems on the next few examples. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to check your work for any of these. So for these next types of problems, we're going to talk about the angles of depression and elevation. We need to make sure that we draw an accurate diagram. And in this case, we have, um, we take, we'll read the problem first. From the top of the tower, the angle of depression to a stake in the ground. So we have a tower. And it says the angle from the top of the tower down to a stake in the ground. That angle looking down from the tower the angle of depression is 72 degrees. The top of the tower is 80 feet above the ground. How far is the stake from the tower? So that is our x value. We're going to assume the tower is built appropriately. We have a right angle with the ground. Now the 72 degrees is the angle that is outside of our triangle, but we know that uh, we can figure out that this angle is 90 so that the leftover angle is 18 in our triangle. And now it's right back to the trig problems that we we're talking about. We need to first identify which trig function we're talking about. And in this case, we are given angle 18. We have the side opposite of 18, and we have the side adjacent 18 which tells us that we are talking about tangent. Tangent of angle 18 measure is x over 80. Now in order to solve for x, we need to multiply both sides by 80. So our x value is going to equal 80 times the tangent of 18. We can go to our calculator and type that in. We get 25.99. And we typically round our sides to the nearest tenth. So that would give us approximately 26 feet. Moving on to the next problem. A tree 40 feet high, so you can get creative with your diagrams if you really want to, but I am not very artistic, so we're just gonna say that that is a tree. 40 feet tall. The shadow that is cast on the ground is 58 feet. Again, making that assumption. And it says that it wants to know the angle of elevation to the sun because that's how we are going to get our shadow cast. So it wants to know the angle that is created in order, or that it that, um, allows that shadow to be created. So again, looking at which trig function we're actually talking about, we need to Look at the fact that we have the adjacent and the opposite, which means we're talking about the tangent. Tangent of the angle measure, we don't know, is x, 40 over 58. Now, in order to solve for x, we need to take the inverse tangent of each side. And when we type that into our calculator, we are going to get an angle measure of Thirty-four point five nine, which is approximately thirty-five degrees.
like you to go ahead and draw, look at the diagrams for number six and seven, draw the diagrams as best as you can, pause the video, and then we will solve them. Hope you got this diagram for uh, number six. And actually in this case, we probably don't even need to use trig. We can see that it is one of our families that we know. So when we solve this one, if a cross from 30, is 7 then the latter, because this is x, x root 3, and 2x, we get the latter is 14 feet. And for this one, um, we talk, it says that we have a 40 foot string, makes an angle of 50 degrees, and it wants to know how high the ladder, or I'm sorry, the balloon is from the ground. So when we're solving this one, Again, look at what trig function. We have the hypotenuse and the opposite. So we need the sine of 50 is equal to x over 40. What we need to keep in mind is that the last part here, that the person holding the balloon is six feet above the ground. So this person is holding it an extra six feet. So whatever we get for x, we need to add six. Go ahead and finish that one for tomorrow. And we'll talk about one last problem here. Uh, number eight is talking about a regular hexagon with a side of eight and a center of O. So we know that all the sides are eight. And because HE is eight and then it's marked that these are congruent, we're going to get four and four. Now, the first couple questions are talking about some things that we need to remember about a regular hexagon. A regular hexagon, finding the measure of each angle is uh, we need to find the sum of all the angles in a hexagon and divide by 6. So when we do that, we find out that the measure of all the angles in a hexagon are 120 degrees. And that will help us find the measure of angle HOM. And we first need to draw HOM. And when we do that, we draw OM, which goes to the midpoint. And this leads to the next question here. When we draw in that segment from O to M, and it is the regular polygon, and it goes to the midpoint, it is also uh, the altitude, and that segment is called the apophthegm. We're going to talk more about that in the next couple, ch in uh, chapter 11, but it's good to uh, recognize that name right now. And then in order to find angle HOM, when we draw in OH, the radius of the hexagon, we are going to divide it into equal angles, so we're going to get 60 degrees, which means that angle HOM is the missing angle, so we're going to get 30, which allows us to find the missing information here, OM, because it is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So across from 30 is our x value, this is our x root 3 value, and our 2x value. So across from 30 is 4, and across from 60 is 4 root 3. And then solving the last question here, finding the area of a triangle of E H O. It's given us a base of eight, so one half the base of eight. We just found the height of four root three, which is a 16 root three units squared. Make sure you finish uh, number seven, and that concludes section 9.10.